guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Thank you as always for joining me. We're still ranked one of the top rated Forex podcasts on iTunes, which is awesome. So a big thank you for you guys supporting the show, sharing the knowledge and spreading the word, and of course, coming up with ideas and questions that I can discuss here that will help many other traders. I want to talk a little bit today... Um, about, I guess, being optimistic during negative times. And I'm recording this in in 2020, March 2020, so we're we're kind of in the middle, at least here in the U.S., of the coronavirus outbreak, and and things are different. I was actually having a discussion with my wife the other day about, you know, um, when will these changes become permanent? Is this kind of one of those periods in life that we're going to make a permanent change in in how we act going forward, whether it's how we interact with people, whether it's how we have uh, how we run our businesses, because there is going to be a major trickle down effect. Now, I I spoke about this in a few previous podcasts about the effects on jobs and and how it's a perfect time to be creative. Right. We were just watching a a walkthrough of a museum. with my kids because we obviously can't go to a museum, but a lady was doing a live Facebook stream of just walking through. Someone was filming and she was taking us through all the exhibits and explaining it. And it's a very creative way to go about it. I was joking with my wife. I said, well, I guess she found a way to keep her job. And I don't say that to be insensitive to anyone that lost their job out there because I have a lot of friends and family members that have lost theirs as well. But again, in times like this, it's really going to, it's, you're going to have to be creative if you want to succeed and you're going to have to adjust. You're going to have to do things that you aren't necessarily comfortable doing. You're going to have to go into that kind of that survival back against the wall state. And it's a negative. It it could be a negative in the short term um, for many. And, and, And again, I do feel for everyone that lost their job, for everyone that is struggling, and hopefully you can keep your head above water. But as we spoke about in the previous podcast, right, stress is what precedes growth, right? Stress is what precedes growth, meaning that you don't grow until you until you are stressed. And and the, the perfect example is just you look at muscles, right? If you want to get stronger, you have to stress your muscles. You have to put them in a state of stress so that they come back stronger and therefore you get stronger. And and life is the same way. This is the same thing we talk about when we say, hey, there's nothing wrong with failing, right? There's nothing wrong with taking a step back and failing and, and being able to learn from that situation to help you further, right? But the problem is these days, too many people think short term and not enough people think long term. Um, we even did a, uh, we had a Q&A session this Monday uh, where we talked about, where we've been testing a strategy and I was um talking about a few filters of, of managing stops and how I wanted to implement an aggressive trail stop. And one of the negatives of that aggressive trail stop is that there are going to be some trades where you get stopped out and the market would have went on to hit your initial target. So by trailing so early, you actually make less off the trade than what you would have done if you would have followed the traditional rules. However, big picture, you have to trust that by implementing that trail stop and not using a set target, you're going to be able to catch those big winners. And in the big scheme of things, right, not just a single trade, but we're talking, you know, after, you know, 20 trades, 40 trades, 50 trades, 100 trades, 10 years, um, doing so consistently is going to be a benefit to you. And I was on the chat. I just uploaded the recording. I was on the chat and... um, one of the traders I work with, Lisa, she was on her. She said, thanks for uploading the q and I can't wait to check it out. And I said, hey, you know, just checking in on people. Uh, how are you doing, Lisa? I like to think that we have a different type of relationship here at Tier 1. It's definitely a, a quality over quantity type of deal. It's not one of those things where we have millions and millions of members running around and you guys are just a number. We actually try to get to know most of our clients as, as much as we can in, in, in forms of, you know, working with people from all around the world. Um and, you know, just wanted to check up on her. And I said, hey, how's everything doing? You know, hope, hope everything is fine and whatnot. She said, yeah, things are fine. Um, this, you know, being out of work, being quarantined or whatever, or told to stay at home has actually opened up the opportunity for me to spend more time on the platform. And I thought about that for a minute. And I thought about how this is going to be a game changing time for many people out there as far as trading goes, because... There's no excuses now, right? One of the, the, I guess, most popular excuses that we have when we talk about people about learning to trade and, and whatnot is, I don't have time. 
All right, Akil, I work this nine to five. I do this. I've got kids. I got that. I understand life is busy. Trust me, my life is a circus, um, but it's a very easy cop out. I don't have time right now. If you really want something, you will make time. It's very easy to create time. Um, you know exactly how many hours you have in the day. You know exactly where you can tweak, right? You can easily kill some time by going to bed two hours later, right? Boom, you just earn two hours or waking up two hours earlier. Boom. Or maybe watching, binge watching one show instead of two shows. You just saved yourself an hour. However, if you are binge watching Tiger King, I understand why you may not be able to get away. It is amazing. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad, but I knew that I could not take my eyes off of Joe Exotic, Carol, and all the other weird characters that were there. But let's not turn this into a Tiger King um, promo. Watch it. Um, but that is one of the biggest excuses. But now that people are home, there are no excuses, right? You have no excuse but to do something. And for many people, they're using this as a time to take advantage of the opportunity and force themselves to do what maybe they made an excuse for not doing before. And I, I can't help to think about this. I can't help to think about how we're going to be thinking about this time and age uh, 10 years from now, right? Again, right now it seems horrible. But 10 years now, when you revisit this, it's going to be an awesome story because I started off in 2007. So I started off trading and learning about investments right during the recession. And when, when everyone thinks back about the recession, they think it is this it was this uh, this horrible period of time where everyone was losing money, but houses were closing down and blah, blah, blah. And I look at it as a springboard to my financial success because what happened is I graduated college in 2007, and this is right in the beginning of it, late two, or middle 2007, and I couldn't get a job. And one of the reasons I couldn't get a job is because it was at that time where no one was hiring or, or hiring became limited. And no one wanted to hire someone with no experience, which I had coming out of college. And then at the same time, once I had gotten my master's, nobody wanted to hire someone for master's because you had to pay them more. So I was in that weird trap of like, I just wasn't the ideal employee for anyone. Um, and many people would look at that as a negative. And, and I did too at the time. I, I didn't, you know, at the time I wasn't really about being an entrepreneur and, and, and kind of creating my own life. This was still around a time where I was like, hey, go get a job so you can make some money. So that's exactly what I did. I picked up three side hustles. I, I, I did what was available. I, I worked as a, a therapeutic uh, staff support where I worked with children that had mental and behavioral health um, conditions. I was in the schools helping out with them, making uh, sure their their day-to-day -day life went as planned and teaching them some new concepts and really how to, I don't want to say fit in, but um, really adjust to kind of a, a, a gosh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say normal world because I don't want to make these people seem like they're not normal. But what is considered to be fit into what is considered to be the social norm. Um, I was also coaching track and field in the afternoons and I was cleaning banks at night. So I was just doing whatever was available because, shoot, I had nothing else to do. I couldn't get a job. And when I decided to get out, I was I was, uh, you know, nibbling at trading a little bit during this time. I was doing just enough to be intrigued, but not enough to be successful, you know, making up the excuse, all the excuses in the world for why I never 100 percent committed. But eventually I got to the point where, again, I, and you guys know the story, I started thinking about my future and, and how I was getting tired of working like 18 hours a day. And um, I started to take trading a little bit more seriously. And, and I decided to quit my three jobs now. Many, this seems like a bold decision for, for many when you hear about it, where it's like, hey, this man just quit three jobs, right? Crazy. How can he do this? Well, you have to remember the situation. One, um, I've been working these three jobs for, but what, a year, year and a half, making $30,000 a year. It's $30,000 a year for someone that had literally like no expenses, right? I am the most, I, I, I am not a diva. I am very low maintenance. Um, <laughs> you'd be amazed at how long I can withstand off of cheese sandwiches and peanut butter and jelly and ramen noodles and water. Um, trust me. So I didn't really spend a lot of money at all. I didn't really have any bills aside from, actually, I didn't even have student loans because I was in grad school. So those were still deferred. Um, and I was living rent free because I owned the uh, the house that we lived in. So it was easy from that perspective. It was also easy from the perspective that, you know, I talked to my dad before making this decision because um, he's he's pretty honest with me for the most part. And he said, he said, Akil, well, think about this, you know, as we're weighing the pros and cons, he says, what do you have to lose? And I was like, well, 
what do I have to lose? And I'm like, I'm, I, I, I'm like, I don't have a career anyway, right? Again, I'm not, a, I wasn't a loser because I had three jobs, but like, it's not like I was quitting a career, something I had worked, uh, you know, I, I'd worked for for a while and made my way through the ranks to follow this dream. It's not like I, I did that. Um, I was, if, if I, I was quitting stuff that I can ease, just regular jobs. Like imagine working for McDonald's and quitting. You can always get hired from a, by another McDonald's. It's not that big of a deal. So there was really no risk in it. So the opportunity of this recession and not being able to get a job, it was really a blessing in disguise because it, in a way, it gave me an excuse not to make excuses. I couldn't make any excuses why not to try because there was no downside risk. And I can see this time being the same thing. Now, from a financial standpoint, I benefited greatly as well. Again, uh, if you ever take a look at a price chart of either a you know, stock index or any specific cur currency index, uh, you know, look around that 2000, 2000 to 2009, 2007 to 2009 period, look at the dip, you'll see exactly when things got cheap and you'll see what happened after things got cheap. So it was very easy to make a lot of money. And we're going through, and easy being a relative term, of course, um, we're going through a same period now, right? We're going through something that is gonna be worse than that period of time. We're going through a situation where people are told you're fired. People are, you don't have to quit, they're doing it for you. We're going through a time where people are working from home we're going through a time where there, there is zero excuse if this is something you wanted to do. And, and I'm speaking bigger than trading. I, you know, obviously, this is the Trading Coach podcast. We're talking about trading. But whatever your hobby is, whatever your life mission is, right, this is a chance to pursue it. Why? Because you have nothing better to do. You have nothing better to do. What do you have better to do? Watch Tiger King, Ozark, Money Heist. All three of those are great, by the way. You can tell what I've been doing <laughs> while back testing. But seriously, what else are you gonna do? You can sit at home, you can you can browse Instagram and do TikTok videos and 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 you know watch all this stuff, or you can dedicate this time to go all in working on your dreams. Why not do it? You have all the time in the world to at least go for it. And ask yourself the question, well, you know, what would this look like if I did dedicate myself, if I dedicated a month to going after it? And it's so cool to hear stories from so many of you guys doing, I can't tell you how many traders have reached out saying, hey, you know, again, I'm checking up on everyone, making sure their families are okay to say, Kill, this is amazing, right? I've got nothing better to do. So I've been digging into the charts, developing this strategy. I'm like, that's awesome. Akil, I got nothing better to do. So I've been digging into my old, uh, my old uh, trading statistics, reviewing it and seeing what I can fix. Dude, that's awesome. This is the time. And if you develop that skill now, you're going to be able to take advantage of the rebound, right? And just like in the early 2000s, right, there's going to be a massive rebound and there's going to be a lot of money that can be made, especially before the general public catches on. And you're going to be in a position where you can take advantage of those times. Whether you're, you're trading a, a, the stock market, a specific stock or an index, right? And, and you're, you're catching the big wave as a whole, whether you're in currencies, which is a little bit different. You're just relying on more volatility to create more profit for you, right? This is going to be an amazing time for those who earn it. The question is, are you going to do what's needed to earn it? And 10 years later, when you look back, right, and we're going to look it back, hey, you guys, you remember that coronavirus thing? Yeah, we were on quarantine for like a year. What did you do? Oh, man, I grew this awesome beard, right? Um, you can grow an awesome beard if you want, but you can also have this story where you said, you know what? This is when I really got focused with my trading. This is when I really got focused on whatever other said hobby you had. And this is when I started turning it into a business. And this, this tragedy, because it is tragic, people are dying, that's never good. But this was a blessing in disguise because it gave me the excuse that I needed to get rid of my excuses and do what I needed to do to put myself in a successful position. Think about it.